Hello everyone, this is Rick, and welcome to Astral Club. This is When Aliens Attack. Before we get into it, just want to mention Patreon. If you'd like to support the work of Astral Club and the spreading of astral projection information, you can do so. When you join, you get advanced episodes on Sunday, a library of downloaded episodes for your podcast app, and a Patreon email where we can talk back and forth. If you're interested, there's a link in the description. Next up, private lessons. If you'd like a lesson to learn how to astral project, I'd be more than glad to help you. Uh, you'll find an email in the description where you can request information, and I'll send that to you. Let's get started. Often, when I was even just a kid, I would hear the topic of aliens. Especially when I was younger, there were people who were influenced by the 1950s type movies, which often featured these unthinking, un well, unfeeling, uh, mysterious beings coming here to Earth and destroying the humans. Uh, uh, for instance, The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells is a perfect example of that type of scaremongering. Later on, we got into the 80s and 90s, and movies like E.T. started happening in Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Now we're talking about beings that seem a lot more benevolent. So now we're going to the other extreme. One minute we got these demons destroying humanity, and the next minute we've got these noble beings that the worst part about them perhaps is they're misunderstood, but they're really noble beings. And there's this idea that they will save us. They're these noble angels that if we do something stupid, like blow ourselves up or attempt to blow ourselves up, they'll rush in to stop us and perhaps stop us from, from killing ourselves or maybe sucking us up into their spaceships, into some sort of alien rapture, saving us. And I always found that both extreme examples of uh, alien psychology was treating them like they were uh, badly written science fiction. Why would beings that are more technologically advanced than us be plastic cardboard cutouts of personalities? Why wouldn't they have a complex psychological makeup just like we do? Uh, why would they be all bad or all good? It didn't make any sense to me. So I've always rejected both of these particular stereotypes. I recall once when I was speaking with Ken, who is now uh, on the Gray Council, and back then he was just uh, head of a kind of a mushroom fungus farm. And one of the questions I asked him was, uh, have your people ever had to, uh, to kill humans? He didn't dissemble at all. He spoke quite honestly and said, yes, there have been some occasions where in self-defense, they were forced to terminate some human lives. And it was regrettable, but hey, they were defending themselves. They didn't initiate anything. I didn't get into detail. I didn't want to ask him for more detail. I don't, you know, you don't know if it's a sensitive topic. You're a guest in their house, so you try to refrain from uh, very sensitive type questions. But it was still on my mind. Recently, the Grush announcements um, reveal that there's a complex relationship going on between humans and uh, alien beings, and that indeed one of the things that were mentioned and the things that Grush talked about was that the aliens had this uh, capability, weapons capability, that we should take very seriously and that there have been attacks in the past. When I hear things like this, I like to go to the CIA Freedom of Information Act website. Or if you go to Google, just put in CIA and then another word, F-O-I-A. It'll bring you to a search page. You can put in a variety of search terms and you will pull up a variety of documents that have been uh, released for humans <laughs> to use, uh, people to use. 
this particular release I found. It comes from the country of Russia. The subject of it is paper reports, alleged evidence on mishap involving UFO. This was published in a Ukrainian paper on 27 March 1993. This is just a summary. There's actually a 250-page file going into detail on this particular attack, but I don't believe that is currently available. So what we have here is this one summary of this particular alien attack. It goes on to say that in 1991, the KGB top secret intelligence uh, fell, and a lot of material from that department made its way abroad, in particular into the, I'm sure, welcoming hands of the CIA. As reported by the authoritative magazine, Canadian Weekly World News, the uh, U.S. intelligence obtained this 250-page file on the attack by a UFO on a military unit in Siberia. The file contains not only many documentary photographs and drawings, but also testimonies by actual participants in the events. One of the CIA representatives referred to this case as, quote, a horrific picture of revenge on the part of extraterrestrial creatures, a picture that makes one's blood freeze. Sounds a little over the top for your typical dry CIA representative. You will soon see as well that the end part, the bit about the blood freezing, is what I consider a in bad taste pun, but we'll get there. According to the KGB materials, a quite low flying spaceship in the shape of a saucer appeared above a military unit that was conducting routine training procedures. Once again, we're talking about the old Soviet Union and we're talking about in Siberia, which is in the middle of nowhere, really, which is why it's great for maneuvers. For unknown reasons, uh, someone launched a surface-to-air missile and hit the UFO. Perhaps Soviet military was a little bit more lax. I know in the U.S. military, nobody fires a missile at anything unless they're ordered to do so by an officer. Of course, you could say perhaps the poor Russian missile launch tech may have been a little upset uh, perhaps not himself, <laughs> with this huge alien craft hovering above them, and perhaps he took it upon himself to take this pot shot at this unknown craft. Of course, we'll soon see that that was an ill-considered tactic. What occurred, of course, is the missile hit the craft, and the craft crashed. People might say to themselves, wait a minute, Rick, uh, this is this is a highly sophisticated craft. When they have deflector shields or something like, like Star Trek says? Well, yes, but this is a scout craft. This is not a craft. It's, a, it's much smaller. It's not designed to travel in between star systems. It's meant for what it was doing, which was doing planetary surveys. So typically, there wouldn't be any kind of need for that type of extreme defense. Imagine one of our helicopters, even a military helicopter, flying low over Earth 10,000 years in the past, maybe 5,000 years, whatever. The bottom line is somebody getting lucky with a spear or an arrow or even a slingshot with a nice, good, fat stone, could possibly uh, injure the craft or kill the pilot enough to crash it. So uh, I'm not putting anything outside their own possibility. What we do know, according to this testimony, is that they fired a missile and it shot down the craft. However, it looks like the aliens survived. After the crash, five short humanoids with large heads and large black eyes 
sounds like the greys to me, emerged from the craft. It is stated in the testimonies by the two soldiers who remained alive, uh, remained alive, that after freeing themselves from the debris, the aliens came closer together and then merged into a single object that acquired a spherical shape. The object began to buzz and hiss sharply. When I read those words, the first thing I thought was, for the love of God, run, you idiots. Don't stand there staring at what's going on. When an unknown object that you just probably pissed off <laughs> and you shot it down, and now these beings are forming this weird thing that's buzzing and hissing, you run from that. You don't stand around. But apparently these particular Russians just didn't get that particular memo. So this object began to buzz and hiss and uh, it grew much bigger and exploded, surprise, surprise, by flaring up with an extremely bright light. At that very instant, 23 soldiers who had watched the phenomena turned into stone poles. Only two soldiers who stood in the shade perhaps behind some trees, survived and because they were less exposed to this luminous explosion. What this reminded me of when I read it, the whole idea about explosion and then stone poles, it reminded me of the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. And I think just about everybody, even people who aren't uh, religious, have heard the story. Sodom and Gomorrah were towns that were called evil. So God sent a couple angels into the town and contacted Lot's family. Lot was apparently the only guy who was good and was worshiping properly. So he had an opportunity to save himself and his family. There was a bunch of other stuff that happened. But the bottom line is they were instructed by these quote unquote angels to leave the city because God was going to nuke it. But beware, do not look back or else bad things will happen to you. I recall reading about another Hebrew translation of this particular passage. And in it, the looking back was translated closer to English as going back. And imagine Lot's wife, who ended up becoming a pillar of salt, according to the, the Bible, because she, quote, looked back. Uh, I think it's probably more likely that she actually went back and was in the blast radius, and then she became desiccated, leaving nothing but mineral salts behind. Of course, the story itself could be apocryphal, and most probably is, or at least there's elements of myth within something that was an actual event. Who knows? But it reminded me, this story reminded me of Lot's wife. The KG report went on then to say that the remains of the UFO and the, quote, petrified soldiers were transferred to a secret scientific research institution near Moscow. Specialists assume that a source of energy that is still unknown to Earth people instantly changed the structure of the soldiers' living organisms and transformed them into a substance whose molecular composition is identical to that of limestone. A CAA representative stated, quote, if the KGB file corresponds to reality, this is an extremely menacing case. The aliens possess such weapons and technologies that go beyond all of our assumptions. They can stand up for themselves if attacked. What that tells me is that, as I said in the beginning of this episode, that why wouldn't alien beings have a complex emotional, psychological, intellectual uh, being or beingness? Why would they be carbon or cardboard cutouts, all good or all evil? No, they're beings much like us 
in that they are complex and they have their own reasons for doing things. Uh, they are certainly capable of self-defense. Indeed, if there's anything that we can judge from the empirical evidence here and elsewhere is that alien beings are masters of very powerful energies and technologies and that they have somehow avoided destroying themselves in the process after they develop these technologies. That's literally all we can really say based on the actual evidence. So it means that they're most likely not all good, not all evil. They're not going to come here and just wipe us out, but don't necessarily expect that they're going to save us from our own stupidity either. That's our responsibility. They're, they're, if they're coming here, and indeed I know they are coming here, they're coming here for a wide variety of reasons, including scientific study and other things. We need to be aware of them. We need to be prepared for them. We need to be very careful because you don't want to unnecessarily provoke craft and races that have the ability to master such technology and powers that they can travel through time space in, in what for us is an impossible speed. That's all we can really grasp from what we see. So they're a mixture of both, just like we are, and that we should treat them with respect and hope that in return, they will do the same. Oh, I found this very interesting. If you did, please hit the like button, share it with those of like minds, uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Please ask uh, your questions and give me your comments. I love that stuff. What do you think about this report? Uh, is it real? Uh, did they deserve uh, what they got because they shot down this craft? What would we have done in a similar circumstance if we had been shot down over uh, someone's territory? Interesting questions. As always, this is Rick, and I will see you on the astral plane.